One of the cool things about our church is the year is color-coded. Now, I don't choose my clothing on Sunday by going into the closet and looking in the mirror and goes, oh, does, does purple make me look fat? Or, I don't know, what do you think, white? It, it kind of washes me out, don't you think? Or maybe I just I feel a little green today, or I'm going to be daring and I'm going to wear some red. See, I, I don't choose the colors based on what looks good on me or, you know, so that, you know, it matches my eyes. I, uh, we choose the colors based on the seasons of the liturgical church year, and each of those colors tells us something about the emphasis of that season. Now, why in the world do we need a liturgical church year when we have a perfectly good calendar year all around us? Why is today New Year's instead of January the 1st? Well, it's because uh, we do that for the same reason that we have a holy building and the same reason that we have holy stuff. You see, we have this holy place, not because God isn't everywhere. He is. You all know that. But we set this place apart specially because this is the place that we come to hear from God, to pray to God, to sing to God. This is where we've celebrated weddings and baptisms and wept at funerals. And yeah, we know that God's everywhere all the time, but this building and this space is special to us. This is a place that we particularly are able to feel the presence of God. We do the same thing with stuff, with plates and cups and water and wine and oil and rings that we set apart stuff as sacred because it helps us experience God through the seven sacraments of baptism and communion and confirmation and marriage and reconciliation of a penitent, which is private confession with a priest, and with unction, which is the anointing with oil for healing and ordination as we turn lay people into clergy. We set apart space and stuff and time. We take days and hours and weeks and seasons and years and we set them apart as specific times dedicated to God to help us to experience Him and to know Him better. Sacred space and sacred stuff and sacred time focus our attention and give us Give us God in bite-sized bits instead of overwhelming us with God being everywhere in everything all the time. Our eyes just don't open wide enough to be able to comprehend a God that, that, that is that big. It's like going to a movie theater. Remember when we used to could do that? And sitting in the front row and having to watch the movie like this because you can't see it all. God is so big that we need to break him down into bite-sized bits so that we can handle it, so that we can comprehend him. Now, when I first came to the Episcopal Church, I thought the church year was just sort of silly. But like so many other things that I thought that I knew and that I think I know, I was wrong. Because it is impossible to feel excited that Jesus is going to come back and then quietly appreciative that he came to earth as a baby. And then grateful because God reaches out to non-Jewish people. And then sorry for all of my sins. And then ecstatic at the resurrection. And then looking ahead to the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And then trying to grow in faith and hope and love. I just simply can't do that. None of us can do that and feel all of those different feelings and do all of those things all at the same time. But we can do each of those one at a time over the course of the year. And as we walk through the liturgical year, what we find is that we encounter more of God and get to know God better one season at a time than we would trying to do all of it, all of the time, everywhere. The genius of the church year is that it gives us these bite-sized bits of God so that we can get to know him in all of his wonder and all of his being and all of his majesty over the course of time. It also nudges us to experience aspects of God that we might rather ignore. All of us have parts of God that we like and parts of God that we can just live without. Like, I like Easter. 
I'm an Easter kind of guy. If it were up to me, it would be Easter all the time. But the reality is there's more to life than just resurrection and joy. There's pain and sorrow and death and sickness and illness and disease. There's all of those other parts of God that I would really rather ignore, but you can't. You can't get to Easter except by passing through Good Friday and the crucifixion. Lent causes me to be somber and sad and thoughtful for 40 days, which is just about as long as I can handle that. But it gives me, it keeps me balanced in my relationship with God. I love Easter, but I need Lent. I need Lent to be more balanced and more full in my relationship with God. Now, I've heard from some of you that you're the exact opposite, that some of you just love Lent. That if it were up to you, we do Lent all year round because you love feeling unworthy and you're not happy unless you're miserable. Just kidding, just, just, just kidding. But in the genius of the church year, it takes us through the valley of the shadow of Lent for 40 days. But then it blasts us with the joy of the resurrection. And whether we like it or not, for 50 days we're going to sing happy songs and we're going to take Jesus off of the cross. That's how the liturgical year works. And here's, that's the benefit of the church here. It has a saying and seeing and doing things that we wouldn't choose on our own, but that we need in order to be healthy and balanced in our relationship with God and with each other. And here's how the church world, the church year works. It all revolves around two things, around Christmas and Easter, which makes sense because those are the two most important events in all of human history. And all of the church life and all of our lives revolve around those two events. The church year has two very different halves. The first half is full of is this parade of feasts and fasts and festivals. And the second half is one long green season after Pentecost. Advent, then, is the first season of the first half of the year, and it starts four Sundays before Christmas today. The word Advent means coming, and during this season we emphasize the coming of Jesus, both as the baby in Bethlehem and when He comes again in glory to judge the living and the dead. We heard Isaiah today in the Old Testament lesson looking ahead to the coming of the Messiah even as Paul writes about and Jesus prophesies and talks about his second coming. Advent is all about coming. The, the color is purple for royalty and Advent has us watching and waiting and anticipating that Jesus is coming again as we get ready to celebrate his first coming as that baby in Bethlehem, like in the stained glass window. Advent is a pregnant season, and pregnancy takes time. No couple ever just kisses each other, and the next day, pfft, there's a child. It takes nine months to grow one of those things, both for the formation of the child herself, as for the stretching and the growing and of the wife uh, or the mother as she's getting ready, and to prepare your hearts and your minds for this new life in your family. Advent is the same way. It takes at least four weeks to prepare our hearts and our minds to celebrate Jesus being born again in our life. And that's why we don't do Christmas during Advent around here. Even though everybody else in the culture is we're not going to do that because we don't want to miss the sweetness of the anticipation of looking ahead so that we can really rejoice when he finally gets here in that second season of the year, Christmas. Now, Christmas is a season. It's not just a day. It's a season. It lasts 12 days, just like the song. The word Christmas comes from Christ Mass, and the color is white for the innocence and the purity of that child in Bethlehem. And we emphasize during Christmas the incarnation, that God became flesh and dwelt among us, that God so loved the world that He came to earth, that He gave His only Son to come to earth to live and die as one of us. The third season of the year starts on January the 6th on Epiphany, which means Christmas lasts until January the 5th, which means if you haven't sent your Christmas cards out yet, 
You have until January the 5th to do that. So relax, okay? But January the 6th starts Epiphany. And the word Epiphany means manifestation or revelation. And during Epiphany, we celebrate that God has revealed Himself to us, manifested Himself to us, and that an Epiphany is one of those aha moments. Oh, we see God. And in Epiphany, we specially marvel that God has revealed Himself to the wise men who weren't Jewish. And in that, He reaches out to all of us who are not Jewish because for the first 2,000 years of Jewish history, God's family was only those people who were the physical descendants of Abraham and Sarah. But now through Jesus, all of us can come into a relationship with our Father through faith. Now, Epiphany, unlike Christmas, unlike Advent and Christmas and Lent and Easter, is variable in length. It can be as short as five weeks or as long as nine weeks. That's because Epiphany ends when Lent begins on Ash Wednesday. And Ash Wednesday is 40 days before Easter. And as you know, Easter moves around according to the phases of the moon. It can be as early as March the 22nd or as late as April the 25th. When Easter is earlier in the year, then Epiphany is shorter. And when Easter is later in the year, then Epiphany is longer. Doesn't matter how long it is, however, it leads us to that next season of the year, which is Lent. Lent is the 40 days before Easter, not counting the Sundays. The color is purple because it's somber. The emphasis is penitence. The emphasis is preparation. And the word Lent comes because it happens in the part of the year where the days are lengthening. They're getting longer. That's where that word Lent comes from. And in Lent, we're preparing ourselves to celebrate that Jesus died for us and rose again on Easter, which means we invite God to dabble in our lives and show us if there's anything about ourselves that needs to change so that we'll be ready to celebrate His resurrection. Sometimes that involves giving up something for Lent, something that is either too important to us or is a distraction from loving God or loving people. It may be giving up some... Uh, giving up something in order to spend that time serving someone else or giving that money to something else. Or it might mean taking on something for Lent, an extra discipline of reading some extra or reading the Bible more or praying more or coming to church every Sunday during the season or tithing, giving 10% of our income during that season, but picking something that helps us get closer to God. Lent lasts 40 days to remind us of the 40 days that Jesus spent in the desert being tempted by Satan after his baptism. And we spend that time fasting and praying just as he did. And it's a somber season with no flowers, no shiny stuff on the altar, no happy music, and above all, no alleluias. Now in Advent, we avoid alleluias, but we sing them every once in a while. We had a couple in that song that we just sang before the sermon. But we, we don't do them much. But in Lent, we don't do them at all. So it's, Lent is roughly a tithe, 10% of the year that we set aside for specific devotion and dedication to God. It prepares us for the drama of Holy Week in the ecstasy of Easter, which is the fifth season of the year. Easter is 50 days once again, Easter's not just a day, it's 50 days of the resurrection. The color is white for the magnificent brilliance of the resurrection, that the sun, both the S-U-N and the S-O-N, have risen. Now, the word Easter has a murky past. We're not really sure where the word came from in, East, in English, but it has, probably has something to do with the East as the sun rises with a new day and new life. But we're really not sure where the word Easter comes from, but that's what we call it. The emphasis is resurrection and new life because Jesus' resurrection guarantees to us that death is not it. Death is not the end. That because Jesus rose from the dead, we will too to live forever with Him and each other and all the saints throughout all the ages. Well, 40 days after Easter, Jesus ascends into heaven where He's praying for us and preparing a place for us. But he didn't leave us as orphans because on the 50th day after Easter, he sent the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. And Pentecost means 50, 50th day. 
The color for Pentecost is red for the power of the Holy Spirit. And Pentecost is the shortest season of the year. It's one day. It's one day. But it packs a punch because it's all about power of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit filling us up to overflowing and equipping us then to share good news with the rest of the world, with our family and our community and ever widening circles until we change the world with Jesus. Well, Pentecost lasts one day. It's the last day of that first half of the year. And then unlike the first half of the year with its parade of feasts and fasts and festivals, the second half of the year is the creatively named season after Pentecost. It lasts for six months. The color is green because the emphasis of Pentecost is growth, growth like grass and trees. It's where we take all the stuff that we heard in the first half of the year and put it into practice. All of those practical daily aspects of living life and following Jesus, which is not very flashy, not always very exciting, not a lot of fireworks in that second half of the year, but is that not how life usually is? Yes, there's, there's fireworks in life every once in a while, but most of the time life is just getting by day by day, isn't it? And that's what Pentecost is about, learning how to live this life as God's people day by day, doing what we know is right day by day, loving God and loving our neighbors and loving one another. And we do that for six months, which brings us all the way back around to where we are today in Advent where we start all over again with this color-coded calendar that gives us God and bite-sized bits. Let's spend this next year getting to know God better, following Jesus more closely, and do it one season at a time.